This is a breakdown how I made the remix for Mihut and Joona Hongel. So, long story short, my good friend Mihut asked me to do a remix for him and Joona Hongel Bazaar Gossip track. Here's the track. Super dope track, really like it. I'll be mainly concentrating on how I took their remix stems they sent and mangled with them and make, made them my own. Let's start with the kick. So this is the kick they sent me. So first of all, I got the first kick of the whole loop, sampled it and put it in this sequencer and I make this pattern. First plugin I put on is the decapitator. I EQ'd the high ends away a bit. Next up, I put one of my favorite plugins on it, the DS10 Drum Shaper by Excellent. It does some really cool transient magic to everything you put it on. As you can see, it boosts the attack a bit and takes some of the sustain away and adds some mojo. And the last plugin on the kick chain is the Volcano 3 by Fab Filter. And I'm using it in the intro just to take the low end away. Just to make things a bit more easier to the DJs. Next up, the crash. This is just plain old 909 crash. This wasn't on the sample kit they sent me, but I feel this track needed the sample. I just put some timeless on it to make it a bit more wavy and interesting, then cut some of the high ends and low ends away. And final, one of my favorite plugins, Sooth 2 by Finnish plugin makers. And one thing what I like to do is I usually sidechain kick to the crashes, so the kicks punch through on the drops a bit more. Next up, hats. These are the hats they sent me. Nice hats, really nice. They're moving around a bit, which I like a lot. So again, I cut a chunk of the hats and made them a bit wilder. This is the effect chain. First, I cut the low ends and high ends a bit way. Then I put my effect rack on it by Sound Toys. There's some radiator, Panman and Micro Shift. Radiator just gives it a bit more body. The Panaman. Well, it pans. So now they are moving a bit more and Microsoft spreads them out a bit. So you can hear those a bit glitchy, weird steps on the hi-hat, which I really like. It adds to the track so much in my opinion. It's a glitchy and grimy and bubbly track, so that works. And last of all, more EQing. Next up, the clap. This is the clap they send me. Really nice clap. I chopped it a bit and made my own loop. And what I usually like to do with sampling, I usually pitch them a bit down or up or something that fits the track. Usually I pitch everything just down. That's what I do. It makes everything a bit more dark. This is the FX chain, a bit decapitator. As you can hear it adds body, then some compression some EQing, some Echo Boy. I'm using the analog chorus, which I really like. It spreads the clap even a bit more to the sides. You can barely hear it, but everything little thing adds to the final product. Then some good old Sooth. Just making the sample a bit more pleasant to ears. And DS10 just to take some of the reverb away. Next up, I add some my own ride there. Really nice thing I did with the ride is the velocity, first of all. Like the first hit is always a bit more quieter than the backbeat. That's how, that's how it gets the bouncing feel a bit more. And I also did some panning on it, kind of spreads out a bit more and then goes back in and spreads out a bit more again, but not as much as before. And it loops that over and over again. On the right, I have some decapitator. EQing, more EQing, 
to get some of the annoying frequencies away. Some vitamin to give it a bit more character imager to spread the stereo even a bit more then some sooth to make it more pleasing to the ear up filter then I have sidechain it to the kick a bit to make it live with the track a bit more I always do that with uh, rides and kicks. Next up, the snare. You can't even hear it almost in a track, but whatever little adds to the track. On a sample, it said uh, claps for some reason, but I think it's a snare. So again, chop it, chop, then I pitched it down a bit, and this is the effects I put it on it. EQ, decapitator, EQ. One thing you need to know about Decapitator is always it adds these super low frequencies for some reason. And I don't mind at all because I can always strip them, them away. If you ever use Decapitator, remember that. Then some effects, effect rack. More EQ. Then finally some reverb. Again, you can barely hear it, but remember that every little thing adds up, always. Next up, the open. Well, kind of open hi-hat. This is the one they sent. Again, I pitched it down quite heavily. Then I only add some filter on it and pan man to pan it around a bit. I kind of felt that the hat sit perfectly in the mix, a bit to the right side and with the little movement there. I like to keep all the elements of the track moving always and I think it makes them a bit more interesting that way. Then we have some more hats. I only added some like basic EQ to them. Really cool hi-hats. I used the hi-hats only from the like uh, midway through of my remix because I needed some variation. I don't usually use the coolest parts that much in the track so they have more value. Then some percussion glitches which are super dope. I only EQ'd them a bit and added some delay. These are my own breaks I put in, pitch them down quite heavily. They're basically drum and bass loop but I slowed them down a bit and missed quite heavily with them to make them fit in the track. This is the breaks without the processing. Really like those. First up, some sooth. Minor things. EQing the kick out, or actually the low end of the kick. Then bringing the sustain a bit down and emphasizing the attack a bit. And this is one of my favorites at the moment, B42 Climax by Impulsor Modular. Add some good character and I also used it to cut some high frequencies away. Really nice plugin, highly recommend. More EQing, more Sooth. Next up, some effect track. I used this analog chorus here to spread it a bit more and push the sample to the sides a bit more. I have just a touch of dry there and micro shift with super tiny bits of dry. More EQ. EQ is life. Then I took the break sample and stretched it up a bit and put basically the same stuff I have on the breaks, but added a bit of reverb to it. It sounds like this. Really cool texture to the breaks or risers or what the f percussions. So this is the percussions they sent me. They are just incredible. And this is what I did with them. For once, I pitched the first sample a bit up. I feel it fit the track a bit better and the tonality of my remix. Then I put the DS10 drum shaper. Again, to bit the sustain a bit down and add some more attack and the mojo EQ. More transient shaping, this time with Isotope's Neutron 4. 
more EQ then I use the Volcano 3 to bring them in in the first breakdown and for this percussion I only used in the outro it has all the same settings but this time I left the bass in a bit more just to make the outro a bit more funky and groovy and I kind of used this percussion in the outro as a bass line because the bass line of the track goes off sounds dope remember to add variation even in the outro it doesn't have to be the intro again so those were the percussions and drums next up let's move to the bass and the bass line they sent me was extremely dope and i really like what they did with it super fat and yeah as you can see i chopped it up quite a bit here and then i rendered it out i did a lot for the bass but try to bear with me so first up eq next up compression by the way you can just watch the dials how they are so i don't have to explain everything <laughs> i'll make more videos of me explaining if you want next up decapitator to make it extra grimy next up the climax now with the climax I emphasized the 150 hertz region of the bass line to give it a bit more body. Next up, more EQing, then some multiband transient shaping. So basically I left the low ends alone. The mid band I did some heavy transient shaping, took the release a bit away. Make it more snappy and high frequencies, nothing. That's how it sounds a bit more controlled. Then some Volcano 3 again to bring it in and out on the risers and breakdowns. That's a good way to give the track like natural riser. You don't have to make any swooshes. Next up is Ozone Imager, one of my favorite plugins at the moment. I made the sub frequencies a bit more mono. That's how you give the track more space to breathe. Mid and mid lows are kind of a bit more stereo -vident. And the click on the high a lot. And again, side chain it with the kick. To make the kick punch through a bit more. Next up, this random bad. I guess it has like some phaser going on. And I don't know where they took that from but it's it's super dope and weird so what i did with it i pitched it a bit up so it fit the tonality of the track a bit more and again automized the volume so it becomes louder when the track goes further i used some eq in as well compression for some random reason and valhalla shimmer more eq after the valhalla shimmer and some soothe which doesn't do a lot but like a wise man once said everything adds up in the end then that's super nice let's hope my fo studio doesn't crash because there's some magic going on with it as you can see it's <laughs> yeah the cpu is sweating so first the usual eq and then i put some bouncing echoes timeless preset on it which is really nice delay and next i put a snap heap on it and this is a granulator so out i automated the snap heaps depth and timelesses mix in to make this really weird stuff with it more compression to make it even more apparent i just love that it's so dope next up something i also used the strings to and this is a neat trick you can do with the uh, fl studio so i made the strings a texture something like this and how i made it so first you double left click on it then go here right click edit in all audio editor and it opens up edison then double click and drag delete double click and drag delete so you can get closer and delete all the unnecessary space then you can just click 
this icon here, which is reverb, and it adds like a convolution reverb to it. Accept. Then under it, here's this blur icon. First, maybe a bit over half amount. Accept. Now it sounds like this which is already super nice. But then I added even more convolution reverb and I used the halls and large hall and accept and then even more blur. And this time I went full on and accept. Now it sounds like this. Then you just click here and drag it to the playlist. And you end up with this. And next what I did, I just pitched it up fully. And this is the FX chain I put on it, some EQ. And in the EQ, I emphasized only the side channels a bit. Then some reverb, huge synth was on the Fab Filter Pro R reverb, which is really nice, long, lush reverb. Then some Sooth, and with this Sooth, I did something you can do with Sooth. I took the harmony strings, I side chain it with the blurred thing I did, and I'm side chaining the spectrum or frequencies to Sooth. So I sidechain it here, click here, sidechain to this track, it's sidechained, you go to Sooth, click here, go to Processing, and you can sidechain it here. When I'm playing them over each other, you can see the Sooth is ducking away from the sidechain input, so you can hear the harmony strings a bit more, and the blur doesn't cover them up entirely. That's a really neat trick. One of the reasons why Sooth is one of my favorite plugins. Next up is the Arpeggio, it sounds like this. And for this arpeggio, I used the harmony strings again, a bit more differently this time. This is a really cool trick as well. So <laughs> hold your hats. I opened it in the Edison, so edit in audio editor. Right click, tools, convert to score and dump piano roll. And here you can see now it convert the audio to MIDI. It's quite close. Well, at, at least you can see all the notes. So the next, what I did. A copy, cut, go to wherever you have your VST instrument on. This time I used the Arturia DX7. You can just paste all the notes here. And what I did, I just found all the right notes. And with the right notes, I made this arpeggio that I just consolidated as a audio track so my computer wouldn't crash. You can just go to the track here, uh, right click and then consolidate all the tracks from track start or song start. And here you have the options to enable the insert effects, master effects or anything. I just take everything away because I might want to change those in the future. Then I just click start and it makes this, which is a lot less CPU heavy. Here's the effect chain EQ. Decapitator. I like to add the crunch to everything. EQ more. As you can see, the decapitator is adding the huge amount of low end. Then some compression and some delay. Same thing I did with the other arpeggio here, which is the arp lead. So I used all the same notes uh, and actually the same plugin. So the X7. But it's octave higher this time and a different pattern. And these are the effects. Good old EQ, P42 Climax. I cannot stop hyping this. Effect track. And this is the preset ambient space, which is dope as hell. It's kind of church hall, kind of reverb space or EQ. Just to control it a bit more. Compression to make the ambient space a bit more apparent. Then some Sooth. Which is doing quite a bit here. And through the balance again to automate the volume in and out. And the volcano to, to bring the sound in and out. As you can see I have been automating. So basically automating the space to come in and out. And this is one of my favorite parts of the track. It's the ambiance of the Indian market, which is <laughs> dope as hell. I didn't have to do a lot for it. I just some basic EQing. Then I put some vitamin 
you can't even hear it that much. And some imager, and I don't know why, but this imager kind of pushes the market ambience to the right side, which I don't mind because I have so much stuff on the left side. So it ends up weirdly balancing it out. More EQ and with the fruity balance, just to bring it in and out. On the drum bus, I have more climax, decapitator. I bought always decapitator on the drum bus here where I root everything to. It's the sum bus. I have Kramer master tape, CLM mix down, decapitator. I, I like to stack many instances of decapitator re rather than just putting one in. So they don't have to work that much and you can fiddle around with them a bit more. Try to make them in balance and create the sound I really want. And some EQ climax, this time a bit more parallel here. So it's not completely on the wet. It's 53% dry and a wet signal. Cool way to tie everything up together. Then I put the fab filter in and this is only side channels and I am removing basically all the low end rumble from the side channels or the sub rumbles. Then I have the sooth on the summing bus just to bring those harshness down a bit of the mix. Then SSL bus compressor too, which is more glued together. Then ozone Im imager, imager and again monoing up the sub frequencies. I didn't do anything for the mids and low mids and high mids. And then I boosted or emphasized the stereo width a bit more on the super high frequencies. That's about it. People always use sonar works. It's the best thing you can ever have. By the way, these are my headphones I'm using. You can see here, it has even profile for those. Go buy my remix and download the original one. I'll leave links somewhere below. Thanks, bye.